Hey there, Crystal Covington here, founder of Women of Denver, and I am here with another interview with one of our amazing members. I'm talking with Nancy McKay with Amazing Outlook Coaching. She is a warm individual. I love talking with her, and she has a lot of things to share with regard to some of the issues that people are working, uh, dealing with today with regard to use of alcohol. So a lot of us have picked up new habits, um, things that we're using to cope with the situations that are going on right now. And I want to just have a conversation about um, the use of alcohol. And, you know, it's, it's pretty prevalent in our homes. I see neighbors walking around with glasses outside because now we can have it ordered from our local restaurant. And, you know, I want to talk about what, what it looks like um, when we're starting a bad habit and how we can start working through that. So first off, Nancy, I want to, you know, ask you a little bit about, you know, how do we know if what we're doing is too much or just moderation um, or something that, you know, it's nothing and we'll stop when Corona's over? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think one of the, the things to be aware of is how, how you're feeling in your body. And you know, we all have an inner knowing and whether or not we tap into that on a regular basis um, probably is one of the defining factors. So if, if we're aware that things have changed and that we're using anything to cope with situations that we're not used to or that are um, different for us, then chances are if you're, if you're uh, pretty aware of yourself, then you know that something has shifted in you and you're using something as a coping tool. And, and if you're using something as a coping tool, then that's probably too much. Um, you know, if, if you're just, you know, if you're a social drinker and you just have, you know, a couple glasses of wine with dinner on Saturday night, then there's certainly not an issue. But if that couple of glasses of wine on Saturday night turns into, um, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, maybe you take a break on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then, you know, and that, if that's unusual behavior for you, then you may want to take a step back and, and say, hmm, you know, what, what is it that is making me change that habit? Um, and then there's, you know, there's people who are, you know, who always have a glass of wine every night and, and that might be moderation for them. Um, and if they're ramping up, then, then that's the time to take a step back and, and look at why have, why have my habits changed? So, you know, there's, there's so many different opinions on how much is too much and, you know, what's the right amount and, and so on and so forth. And, and I think, you know, when you, when you start to cross a line of from social drinking to heavy drinking to abusive drinking, um, there's, there are some definitive um, markers, or at least there were for me. And one of the, the biggest things for me was when, when it became unpredictable, how I would react to the alcohol I was drinking became unpredictable. So, you know, if, um, if one, one night you have a couple glasses of wine and it doesn't seem to affect you much and the next, you know, next time you drink, you have a couple glasses of wine and, you know, you get totally blotto, then, then that's when your drinking has become unpredictable. And, and that's a, that's something to be aware of that something has shifted in your physiology that is, um, that's changing how you how your body is processing alcohol. And that's what happened to me was I could never really predict how the alcohol was going to affect me when I started drinking. And so, you know, that's, that's kind of a red flag uh, for folks. And so, um, you know, it's, everything in moderation is, is fine, <laughs> but, I think we also need to be aware of the fact that, that, that alcohol producers are 
really trying to um, normalize drinking. And, you know, you know, when they, there's a, there's a commercial on now for kettle one vodka, I think it is that, that um, recommends moderation. You know, they, there, it's a cartoon and, and the, bartender serves up a great big martini glass to the person at the bar and they look at it like, well, I didn't order that. You know? <laughs> and then, you know, they shrink it down to size and it's like, that's better. And so they're acknowledging that alcohol consumption is on the rise and that it's not a great thing, but they're also normalizing the fact that everybody is drinking and that you're not really hip or, you know, in the, in the groove unless you are drinking. And so you're getting bombarded by messages that say that drinking is the way to be beautiful, successful. Um, everything you want, you can have as long as you've got this drink in your hand, right? And so the the big alcohol companies are doing exactly what the big tobacco companies did years ago in that you know this is great for you this will make you happy and make life worth living and uh you know the the fact of the matter is it's just not true yeah and so it's funny i used to be one of the um uh, promotional models that went out and, pr and, and promoted alcohol. They would train us, they would give us, they would give us samples so we understood what each thing was and they taught us kind of what moderation was, which is like one to three drinks a night or, or a day or something like that. Mm -hmm. Over that is, is too much, but we would have to, con to walk around and I, I think it was of the law or something, but we had to walk around and when we did do promotions, we had to say, you know, drink in moderation and we'd hand out things to um, remind people to drink in moderation. And then they also would give us these, you know, so we were there making it cool, like, oh, pretty girls represent alcohol. And, exactly. you know, we gave out t-shirts and made it fun and encouraged people to incorporate, the whole goal was to make, to create these exciting and fun experiences around the alcohol, which makes it, you know, it's in alignment with, okay, fun, you know, equals alcohol. Fun equals alcohol. And yes. And but, if you buy this, you'll really have fun. Right. But the funny thing was we would also have a stock of little taxi cards where it paid for people to, if they were too drunk um, at the end of the night and we saw someone that looked like they were scary, um, then we would give them those little cards for free, sure. a free ride home. Sure. Because they didn't want to be liable. Yes. Right. So have fun and do this, and then when you, you know, when you have too much fun, then be sure to take a taxi so that you don't sue me for, you know. <laughs> yes, very interesting, very yeah. interesting. It walks an interesting line. Um, so one other thing that I wanted to, you know, bring up, so we talked about kind of some of the risk factors when you can identify it. It sounds like it's very personal to each person. Like, okay, yeah. I think, I used to drink once a week when we hung out on the weekends. We're not hanging out on the weekends anymore and I'm drinking because I'm stressed out. Maybe there's other things that I should be doing. Exactly. What are some of those things that they should do to, you know, they recognize, okay, I'm using alcohol to cope. Alcohol is not a long-term coping mechanism. There's other things that I should be doing that maybe are more internal. Maybe could be some practices that I could do or something that changes this negative habit into something that's more um, feeds my life versus sucks out uh, some life because alcohol isn't really good for your bodies at all. No, it's not. It's not. And so there's, you know, there's a ton of stuff. So, you know, the first thing I do is if someone's re reaching for a drink as a coping tool, you know, I got, you know, what a day I need a drink sort of thing the first thing I recommend is to get yourself grounded. So, you know, do some deep breathing exercises and, you know, sit down and plant your feet and really get your, your body grounded. So get into your body and, and identify 
what your body is actually feeling in that moment of need for something to calm you down, you know, or, or to stimulate you or whatever it is, but you're reaching for something externally to change what's happening to you internally. And so, you know, if that's happening, then there's, you can always go within to check in there instead of reaching for something on the outside. So breathing, grounding, and then, you know, it may not be the appropriate time, but if, if you start doing a meditation practice, then that is going to help you deal with the things that make you want to reach for a glass of wine or a whiskey or whatever it is in order to help you cope. So if you're, um, you know, being proactive in doing meditation and getting yourself centered and aware of your body on a regular basis, then chances are that that's going to help you alleviate the need for, for something else. And then, you know, pick up a, a healthy habit, you know, go for a bike ride, go for a walk, you know, read a good book, read something that is stimulating to you that, that, um, you can learn something about. I mean, uh, you know, this is a great time to pick up a new hobby or a new, you know, learn something new that feeds your soul rather than alcohol. Alcohol numbs everything and it also lessens your ability to be present and engaged in the world around you. And so, yes, our worlds have, have shrunken, you know, we're not able to go out and socialize the way we used to, but that doesn't mean that we can't still grow and learn new things um, in, this, in this particular time. I mean, it's just, um, this is a great opportunity. So it's a really good opportunity to change bad habits. And it's also, unfortunately, an incredible opportunity to increase the bad habits that we've got. You know, we can really lean into drinking, eating sugar, you know, uh, laying on the sofa and watching Netflix all day, you know, that sort of thing. I mean, there, it's, it's a double-edged sword. So, you know, um, and the biggest thing is being aware of things when you're, when it's happening to you. So. Thanks for that. So how can people, you know, let's say they want to, somebody wants to connect with you. They want to get some additional support. Um, get some more tips. How can somebody get in touch with you? Well, my email address is nancy at amazingoutlookcoaching.com. And you're welcome to visit my website, which is amazingoutlookcoaching.com. And I'm happy to, to talk with anybody um, who's having any kind of concern about coping with, um, you know, with anything that's going on in their lives. Uh, it doesn't even have to be COVID related or even alcohol related really, but um, you know, it's, it's so important to just be aware of, of a shift in your thinking when, you know, when things crop up, everyone needs support and, and, you know, I just encourage anybody to reach out if they need it. Awesome. Thanks so much for spending a few minutes with me today, Nancy. I really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.